on into the eyes of the awfully backs. Gary Kirby taking it well. Gary with three points so far, two of them from play. The half-time whistle has been sounded here. Limerick have had the better of the first half, no question about that. They've dominated in defence, given some great ball into their forwards, and Damien Quigley has helped himself to two goals and two points. Out of Limerick's half-time tally, they lead at half-time by six points. It's Limerick 2-8, Offaly 1-5. And certainly Eamon Cregan and his Offaly selectors will be in there hammering a few home truths to their players because they really have to produce the goods in the second half, otherwise the cup is going to Limerick. Pat Heffernan there, picking up an injury in the first half, didn't score, but uh, they've had some good service, and they should perhaps be even a few more points ahead. So Eamon then composing himself just before going in, normally a very calm demeanour, and I'm sure he'll just tell the players in a calm, straightforward fashion what has to be done if they're to come out and win the second half and the cup. Paul Jamal Hare there alongside him. And Marty Morrissey, I think, might have somebody to talk to just as they go in at half-time. Marty. Yes, indeed, Chair. Uh, Andy Gallagher, awfully selector at half-time. Your thoughts? Your team not playing that well, Andy? No, we haven't got into the game at all at this point in time. Although we have hurled again a fairly strong breeze. Where do you see the biggest problem now? Well, I don't know. Uh, I suppose it's to motivate them to go out in the second half and hurl as they're capable of hurling and bringing an Ireland home to Offaly. Damien Quigley is causing you problems uh, at corner forward. Yeah, he's been very dangerous, but hopefully that one's solved now. Thank you, Andy Gallagher. So the advantage with Limerick at half time then, but uh, it is only six points, that's not a great deal in hurling, and Offaly have played against the Breeze in that first half. Still everything to be decided in this year's All-Ireland Final, and we'll find out exactly what's going to happen later on after this commercial break. Welcome back again to Krog Park. Frank Patterson is entertaining the crowd, and he's giving them his version of Limerick, you're a lady. In winter snow or sun, golden sun, we fished in silver streams, the flattening of our dreams was fashioned by your loveliness, and so I have to say. Thank you. 
Patterson and the Artane Boys band there with the Offaly Rover and before that of course with the Dennis Allen classic Limerick You're a Lady. Well DJ Carey, Limerick certainly have been a lady so far in terms of this All-Ireland final and really an impressive first half. Very good Michael and, and probably should be a few more points ahead that drove 11 or 12 wides in the first half and a lot of them were very scorable wides but you have to be very impressed with the way they've played so far. And I wouldn't mind but Offaly got the right kind of start Peter Finnerty, uh, the penalty uh, award to them and uh, gave them the goal they needed. The day there was, I thought, a dubious decision myself. I didn't really think that um, it was a penalty, but in fairness to the referee, his back was turned to it here. I think Johnny Pilkin lost control more than anything else there. Um, but he awarded the penalty and Joe Dooley took it from the rebound. It was a great start for Offaly and they maintained a good flow there for about 15 minutes. But Limerick have pulled away again. But this man, Damien Quigley, has been phenomenal in the corner. He's had a magnificent two goals. Good stop on the though. penalty initially here by Joe Quaid, of course. It was. Joe took out his leg and he was, it was a great, brave save. But Joe Dooley was in like a light. And he just chipped it up and in, into the back of the net. It was a magnificent start for Offaly. But that only counteracted the, the um, earlier uh, Limerick goal. Here's a look at it from another angle from our in-goal camera. And you'll see the foot of Joe Quaid just gets to the ball here, Pete. But yeah. as you said, Joe Dooley very quick off the market in there. Great save by Joe, but Joe Dooley was in like a light. OK, now this is the next goal, of course, that we saw. This one for uh, Limerick, and what a run this was by Damien Quigley. Excellent. Uh, he got the ball maybe 30, 40 yards out uh, and got the break and went clean through. Uh, you'd have to wonder where the off the cover was in that incident, but uh, Martin Hanamy didn't get to him on time. But it was an excellent strike into the far corner. Uh, Jim Toy obviously saw things a little bit late there because he didn't make any great attempts to sort of to get out of one belt. Well, uh, in fairness to him, he hasn't got an awful lot of time to think because he's not sure exactly where the ball is going. So he hadn't a lot of time really to think. Yeah, well, that was a goal that really, from Damien Quigley's point of view, put him uh, on the map. And then came this. And uh, DJ, that was a brilliant piece of action. That was, that's a forward three to score a goal like that. I mean, the ball comes through. He's been held, been held well and fairly. And all of a sudden, he dives out, gets the hurl, gets a flick to it, and into the far corner of the net. Goalkeeper has no chance at all. OK, the Limerick team are out on the field, as you can see. Let's go back again to Jerk Hanning. Thank you, Michael, and uh, I don't see any change on the Limerick team. There would be no particular change. Marty, have you got some news? Yes, indeed. Well, in the Offaly camp, I can tell you that Hubert Rigney is being moved to wing-back. Brian Whelan is going in centre-back. Martin Hanamy is going to be staying on Damien Quigley, who's definitely causing problems. And as Offaly come out, I have Tom Ryan, Limerick manager. You must be pleased with the first-half performance, Tom. Yeah, man, we're very pleased. We're a bit disappointed we're wide, all right, but... Other than that, we are, we are pleased with the performance. Now, you're going to be facing into a rather stiff breeze in this second half. Have you developed any or changed any tactics? No, we play the ball alone now in the second half. The wind is changing. It's, it's half a score. The wind is possibly the cause of the inaccuracy in our forwards. So you wouldn't know what advantage is playing with it or against it today. But we are we're ready for now. No changes, Tom? No changes, Mappy. Thank you, Tom Ryan. Thank you, Mappy. And significantly, no changes on the Offaly team either, having made one personnel change during the first half. Joe Erity coming in. But they have the option of players like Michael Dignan and Pat O'Connor. Half-time position then. Limerick ahead by six points. Is it enough? Willie Barrett making sure that everybody is back in position. Joe Dooley has switched with Declan Pilkington. Joe's now top of the left. Other than that, no other switches apart from the one that Marty mentioned there. So poised and ready for the second half. 35 minutes then to determine where the cup is going for this year. Johnny Pilkington straight away here. Past the cover of Dave Clark. Runs on to John Troy, who's had some very good moments, even against a strong man. 
by Ger Hegarty. Dave Clark again. Hubert Rigney now on this left-hand side, marking Frankie Carroll. And that's Brian Whelan, one of the real stars for Offaly in the first half. Ger Hegarty. Nice hand pass outside, but uh, perhaps just too much for Mike Houlihan. Something similar happened at the start of the first half and a half, I seem to remember. Johnny Pilkington to cut this one up. Nice covering of grass on the park this afternoon. Joe Hegarty. Defending well. Strongly built fellow towards Frankie Carroll there against Hubert Rigney. Hubert winning it well. Not going so far, just as far as Mike Houlihan for Limerick. Locked down towards Gary Kirby. Kirby now against Brian Whelan. What a battle that will be. Two very skillful players. It's been a very skillful match overall. And only six frees awarded in the first 35 minutes. Damien Quigley, Quigley the hero of that uh, first half, gets Martin Hanami. And that one has gone to the right. Damien Quigley is the scorer of five points going into this championship final. This is his fifth championship match. Jim Troy will be happy to have the wind behind him for the second half. Sun has faded momentarily. Dohi Regan added to that brilliantly. Nicely in there towards Billy Dooley, trying to get motoring against Joe O'Connor. Stalemate situation. Dooley playing it back here towards his brother Johnny. Johnny making some space for himself to swing the stick, but to the left. Just one point to show for the match so far. Joe Quaid in no particular hurry. Lands in midfield, Declan Pilkington winning that one. Now Ger Hegarty. Towards Gary Kirby, attempting to play ground, Hurley missed it. That's Kevin Martin. This is Brian Wheelahan trying to nurse it away from the attentions of Gary Kirby. Kirby just got a nod onto it. Damien Quigley. Martin Hanami is his marker. And he's really causing his danger much nearer into goal. Declan Nash. At his championship debut against Kerry in 1989. Martin Hanami coming across, denying Damien Quigley the space and latitude this time. Declan Pilkington into space, really giving no chance whatsoever for Brendan Kelly to contain that one. Pilkington now playing at left half forward on Dave Clark. As you were a situation score wise after about four minutes of the second half here on Carey denied space runs out to Johnny Dooley thought he was going to be hooked so he kicks it downfield towards Declan Pokey to try to get more and more into the match this time he's fouled by Steve McDonough his father John won a minor all Ireland medal back in 1958 getting a new stick there John McDonough also played at right corner back this is where he fouled his man Declan Pilkington Nothing terribly serious, but a free to Offaly. So Johnny Dooley, who is one from three from his frees so far, and then of course being a penalty. And now that's two from four. And Offaly are on the board at the start of this second half, and they peg back the lead to a five-point lead. The Offaly fans up there on Hill 16 expecting the pyrotechnics and the fireworks now in the remaining half an hour. Ger Hegarty winning his race there with John Troy. Troy, however, gets it forward. Stopped by Mike Nash, picking out his brother Declan. The South Liberties players combining well. Another chance for him. 
towards Frankie Carroll, but it's Hubert Rigney who's there first. To Johnny Pilkington. Good supply inside towards Billy Dooley to cause the problems. Goalkeeper is fouled, that's going to be a free out, but that ball was a real tantalising one in there between the full back line and the goalkeeper is now injured. This is where that ball landed inside there, beyond Joe O'Connor, Joe Quaid coming out. Watch as Billy Dooley and Brendan Kelly were converging, and it's Kelly who caught him. Joe back on his feet again. The man of the moment. Joe Quaid. Dropping it into midfield. Ger Hegarty just handles it away. But it's awfully who are picking up the tempo now. Significantly at the start of the second half. Declan Pilkington again trying to drill in a score from way out the field and he's got the range. And the lead now is back to just four points. Nothing really in a game of hurling and in particular in the All-Ireland hurling final. Declan Pilkington's first score. Offaly fans given a bit more hope now. They were never without hope, even when there were six points down at half-time. That's a great score. The pressure now very firmly on the Limerick backs. Dohi Regan trying to win it, comes out towards Kieran Carey. You heard Tom Ryan say that they were going to play it low into the wind if at all possible. Ryan making some good headway, or Kieran Carey rather. Back out towards Frankie Carroll. On his left-hand side, well away from the target. And he'll be disappointed with that one. His brothers, of course, played in the All-Ireland Final in 1980. Mossy and Brian. Brian came on that day, scored a point. Damon Cregan, who was centre-half back for Limerick the last time they won in All-Ireland. Jim Troy now showing a little bit more urgency. Still plenty of time to go. Broken stick there, that of Dohi Regan. Mike Houlihan going back, it's Ger Hegarty in fact. Hegarty leaving it there to Johnny Pilkington, and the Pilkingtons are doing the business at the start of the second half. A few minutes ago it was Declan, now Johnny, his second point, and the gap is down to just a goal really. This, the action here, which has resulted in Johnny Pilkington picking up a great score from some distance. Back live with the action. It's awfully we're applying the pressure and the question's been asked of the Limerick backline. Declan Nash responding positively on his left-hand side. TJ Ryan now. Chased by John Troy. Still Ryan, he's made some great headway. Ball cut out there by Joe Erity, and Erity the substitute whipping on it away to the far sideline. Kept in play by Declan Pilkington, who lost his footing. Dave Clark firing it in, dangerously in there into the Offaly goalmouth area. Jim Troy coming out for it, making the save. Game has increased in intensity in the second half. Here's Joe Dooley. Chance of a score here, and Joe Dooley takes it. That's a goal of two points, and now he says, come on, we can do it. It's 2-8 to 1-9, 14 to 12, Limerick by two. Well, this is a bit more like it now from two sides, and in particular, Offaly. Offaly looking for their third All-Ireland success, Limerick looking for an eighth. Joe Quaid, he's had to puck out time and again in the opening nine minutes of the second half indicative of the pressure from the faithful county. Dave Clark skipping away from the would-be challenges, just leaving the ball behind to Dohi Regan. Regan prodding it forward towards John Troy, Johnny uh, Dooley. And that's just too much there for brother Billy to keep in play. I'm sure the Dooley's parents are here enjoying this as well, Sean and Betty. They have another brother, Kieran, who was also in the Offaly team at one stage playing in the league. Ger Hegarty has now switched with Kieran Carey. Kieran Carey's gone back to centre half back. Interesting switch that. Here he is, Carey getting away from the Offaly challenge. Hit into space. Kevin Kinahan going across there against Pat Heffernan. 
Heffernan, the burly figure, taking it up. Partially blocked down, comes to Brian Wheelahan. Mike Houlihan taking it with style, taking it away from Declan Pilkington, firing it into the forwards, in towards Quigley again, looking for another one. This time he couldn't make a connection. I think he was dreaming of a third, and perhaps one very similar to the second. Probing ball inside by Mike Houlihan. He ran on and on, but uh, Quigley just couldn't make that kind of connection. And Jim Troy really had committed himself. Mike Houlihan, Declan Pilkington, playing very well at the start of the second half, on towards Dohi Regan. Remember, just two points separating the teams. Not a good shot, however, for an awfully side that led momentarily after the penalty. And after about four minutes play. Frankie Carroll. Well, if Gary Kirby is going to be very tightly marked, perhaps Frankie Carroll or maybe Mike Galligan, who hasn't been a major player in this game so far, can come more into it. Here's Kirby, back to Galligan, but the referee says there was a chop down by Joe Arity, free in. There was no advantage accruing that time, and Mike Galligan had possession. But there's a chance of a Limerick score here. Eamon Cregan and his selectors have a policy of looking at the substitutes Joe Arity was very much the substitute in form in the last week and that has influenced their decision making about who to bring on in crisis situations Gary Kirby <laughs> getting that point first score of the second half for Limerick Gary Kirby's fourth point some relief faces up there on the canal end People looking at their watches, but there's a long, long time to go. Jim Troy now switching it across. Ger Hegarty reading the intentions. Battling with another strongly built player, Dohi Regan, comes out to Johnny Dooley. To Johnny Pulkington, fired it in first time, in towards Brendan Regan. Brendan Kelly, rather. Kelly, who has really yet to get the better of Mike Nash. Kieran Carey pursuing Joe Dooley. Comes back towards Brilli Billy. Billy Dooley, the umpires having a look at it, sunshine in their eyes. And then they decide to wave it wide. Billy, the scorer of two points in this final so far. Out of Offaly's tally of a goal and nine. Tom Ryan there in the centre of picture, his side ahead by a goal. Ger Hegarty. Doing well at midfield. It might yet be a very significant switch inside towards Pat Heffernan and breaks down. Jim Troy comes out, skips it away. And it's Quigley, who's so sharp this afternoon. That's a point. Two goals and three points now for Damien Quigley. Anything that breaks down in front of goal there. Well, and the form he's in today, Damien Quigley is in so quick, so incisive. He really is playing well. His best match in the championship by a mile. Great catch by Johnny Pilkington. Blocked down well by Ger Hegarty. It's a great tussle in midfield. That's Quigley again, so sharp. This time Joe Erity going back. But Quigley has it. Well, it hasn't gone wide, but it was a chance. Jim Troy against Pat Heffernan. Jim winning the sprint. <laughs> TJ Ryan. Back, there's no goalkeeper. Gary Kirby. It's over the bar. Martin Hanami was back there. And Gary Kirby has now scored five points. He tells the supporters, come on, cheer us on. 2-9 to 1, 2 to 1, 9. He's a little happier. Offaly had got to within two points. I was watching Jim Troy 
sprinting and training in Offaly and Tullamore in the last week. Here's Joe Hegarty again. Taking over at midfield, Kevin Kinahan keeping it away there from Pat Heffernan. Picking it up the second time. And even Damien Quigley powerless to deny him as awfully prepared Michael Dignan, and he may be in the fray very shortly. Declan Nash, lovely tidy player. Nice use of the hand pass. Mike Coolahan through the centre. Up it goes towards Mike Gallagher. Kept away from him or by Brian Wheelahan. Down it goes. Declan Perkinson watches it come back to Mike Coolahan. Right now the Limerick pair of Coolahan and Hagerby have taken over once again at midfield. Quick look over his shoulder, beating Johnny Perkinson for pace. But the shot, not matched by the build-up. And Michael Dignan now about to be introduced by Eamon Cregan. Dignan scorer of four points in the championship so far giving the little slip of paper and who's the player who's about to be replaced Dagnan's on and it seems to be Dohi Regan who's about to make way Cher Hegarty had beginning to be to get on top in that region hence the change Dagnan in there straight away on Cher Hegarty beaten and it's Hegarty who comes away he's fouled well, it's been a match where there have been very, very few fouls. And Dave Mahidi is told by referee Willie Barrett, away you go, mind you. Declan Nash wants the trainer in for this incident here as Kevin Martin caught your Hegarty emerging with possession. And uh, Willie Barrett has had a change of heart and allowed the trainer to come in. And uh, Dr. Dave Boylan as well. Jap here, one of the great Limerick characters who's been supporting Limerick teams down the years and been involved with uh, many selection committees as well. JP Ryan. Now Dave Clark. In around the house, gathered there by Gary Kirby, the team captain. In towards Pat Heffern and looking for another goal. Didn't quite connect as he would have wished, but there was a chance. Limerick continuing to lead by five points. This was from the free by Dave Clark, really causing some moments of consternation. Great catch by Gary Kirby, then went out to make some space for himself, and watch as Pat Heffern was coming onto it, but never really hit it properly. So in the splendid sunshine of Croke Park on a day which started with scattered showers, it's Limerick who are hanging on grimly. Michael Dignan firing it in. Once again, there were moments of real danger. Dave Clark, Brendan Kelly, looking around just to see what's on, firing it in there to that built-up area. Declan Nash needing support, Steve McDonough. Great clearance under pressure by McDonough, the cornerback, broken down by Joe Arity of Offaly. Offaly looking for a third All-Ireland success. Johnny Dooley, that's a wonderful block by Mike Houlihan. There have been some great stars on this Limerick team today. One of them has certainly been Mike Houlihan at midfield. Kevin Kinahan. And Kevin was being fouled, pulled back there, and it's going to be a free for Offaly. What a great season the number three here has had. And Limerick may just about to be introduce a fresh pair of legs. You see Leo O'Connor preparing on the far side. No change has been made just yet. Kieran Carey batting it out. Comes to Michael Dignan. Out to Johnny Pilkington. Scoring chance for Pilkington here. Lashed in. And Brendan Kelly got the stick to it. Was trying to do a kind of Damien Quigley. Well, that's gone wide. And this is that shot again. Venomously hit in there. But that ends up in the side netting very close. And there's Leo O'Connor coming on. He was a sub back in 1984 as well when Limerick won the Centenary Minor Championship. Um, it may well be Mike Galligan who is going to make way. Didn't enjoy the best of luck. 
and also Pat O'Connor has come in. Pat O'Connor of Cool Derry. There's a cousin, I think, of one of the greats of Offaly hurling. Joe Dooley has uh, made way. Pat Carroll, the player I was thinking of there, the late Pat Carroll. And uh, Pat O'Connor is a cousin of, of Pat's. Sadly died back in 1986, having won All-Ireland medals in 1981 and uh, 1985. Kevin Martin to take this sideline cut. Well taken by Billy Dooley. Now, can Pat O'Connor make a difference? He's not going to get a chance from that attack. That final telling pass by Billy Dooley there. Not what he wanted. And certainly not what Pat O'Connor wanted. About 14 minutes remaining. Limerick hanging on to their five-point lead. After Offaly had looked so prominent in the early stages of the second half. Michael Dignan back deep. Batted away there by Joe O'Connor. Limerick full back line has done well. O'Connor dropped in towards Frankie Carroll, trying to skip away from Hubert Rigney, but Brian Wheelham came across there, off the legs of Frankie Carroll, runs on here for Leo O'Connor. O'Connor who's replaced Mike Galligan. The shot from way out the field, and that's a point! His first shot and his first chance to shine. Leo O'Connor puts six points between the teams at a critical stage in the match. Time running out now for Offaly. This was a great shot. Very much an individual point by Leo O'Connor. Took it around Joe Erity, and on his left-hand side, struck it magnificently, right between the posts. Johnny Dooley now. Well, this is where Offaly need Johnny and Billy Dooley in particular to really get into the match. Mike Nash watches that one come away from Joe O'Connor. Mike gets another touch in it. Ball comes out to Kieran Carey. And finally to Dave Clark. Great hurler. Runs on. Brian Wheelahan watching Kevin Keenahan, the fullback, come away for Offaly. Defend well. Send defence into attack. Down over the head of Declan Pilkington. Steve McDonough lets it behind there to Pat O'Connor. McDonough gets another chance. And that's going to be an awfully ball, although there were Limerick people who thought that the last person to touch it was an awfully player. Johnny Pilkington. Mike Houlihan. Just 12 minutes left now. Joe Errity leaves it behind. Ball still in play. Won't come up first time for Joe and Leo O'Connor. Leo is captain of a very good under. 21 team back around 1987-88. That's the second chance. Trying to get away here from Johnny Pilkington. And runs out of space, puts it out over the sideline, and it's awfully possession. Referee there has had a look at Hubert Rigney, who was uh, injured in the previous attack. Still on his feet. So Joe Errity will be the taker of this sideline ball. Joe from Burr. Declan Pilkington dropping it in there towards Johnny Dooley. Michael Dignan taking it up very precisely on the 45-metre line. Striking for a score, and he's got it to peg back that lead. A more manageable lead as Michael Dignan is a scorer, and there are five points between them. Limerick are considering another change. Eamon Cregan also considering his options. Limerick considering Sean O'Neill from Bohr, who's a forward. There's a Sean O'Neill and a John O'Neill among the subs for Limerick. Sean is the forward. Dave Clark. Judged to have been fouled by Hubert Rigney. And Limerick in no particular hurry to take the free. Gary Kirby coming across here. Bidding to emulate the feat of his uncles Richie and Phil back in 1973. And of course, Eamon Cregan was a star on that team as well. 21 years ago. 
Gary sending it in, but sending it just to the left. Score of five points so far. So the best part of ten minutes still remaining, plus possibly injury time. Picked up well here by Johnny Dooley. Fired in. Good score by Johnny. That's three points now for Johnny Dooley. And the lead is whittled away once again, down to just four points. It's still possible for Offaly, and Limerick still have a lot of work to do. Significantly, of the six forwards who started, only two of the Limerick forwards have scored today. Whereas four of the six Offaly forwards managed to get on the scoring sheet. Frankie Carroll, one of those yet to score. Oh, that could have been very dangerous, ending up on the concrete here. It looks like Primoire John Leonard there, who's helping Frankie to his feet. And Johnny Pilking just, just checking that he's OK. And the sheer intensity of pursuing this ball here, Johnny just gave a little push there to Frankie Carroll. It could have been more serious, but thankfully isn't. Full credit to Hubert Rigney, who's done really well on Frankie Carroll. Brendan Kelly now trying to make some headway. Supported here by Declan Pilkington. And Pilkington had judged to have fouled Kieran Carey. That switch of Kieran Carey and Ger Hegarty from centre back to midfield has worked wonders. At a time when Kieran was flagging somewhat, Ger came in, used his great physique. And here was Kieran Carey now at centre half back, just having been fouled. Pat Heffernan. Against Joe Erity. Back to Leo O'Connor. Good block by Erity. Comes to Kevin Martin, having dispensed with the helmet now. Kieran Carey rises so high for that one. Mike Houlihan. The cohesion is in this Limerick side. They're well drilled. And certainly they have a great fitness level as well. And they're winning key battles in vital areas of the field. Martin Hanemi in a real hurry. And uh, TJ Ryan there with Damien Martin. The referee says, just cool it down. It's been a good sporting contest so far. Dickie Murphy, the line's been over there. Sheer intensity of the thing. It was one Limerick man who collided with another. Quigley with Ryan. And then, what did you do to me? I did nothing. So it'll be a throw-in. Sensible refereeing by Willie Barrett. Frankie Carroll winning it. But it comes back again to Brian Wheelahan. What a game he's played. Likewise, Kieran Carey. Dropped in. Ger Hegarty under the dropping ball. Comes loose, however, to TJ Ryan. Again, the referee is in there. This time indicting the Offaly player for a foul on TJ Ryan. Brian Wheelahan is the player involved. It'll be a free for Limerick. And just as in that previous incident, it may well be that uh, the Limerick man was felled by his own colleague. Watch it again here. It was a Limerick player who collided with a Limerick player, Ger Hegarty and TJ Ryan. And Limerick get the free in. It's one of those days when things are happening for them. They've been on a bit of a roll all season, and it's continued right here in this All-Ireland final, and Gary Kirby has got point number six for the day. And just five and a half minutes left, and it's 2.13 to 111, 19 to 14. Jim Troy, the Offaly team needing possession. They've got to get a goal or two quickly. Michael Dignan, Johnny Dooley now, beating the attempted block. Fired in well there. Billy Dooley taking it, trying to get away. He's fouled by Joe O'Connor on the 20 metre line. Will they go? Well, they were trying, I think, to go for a quick free that time. It didn't work out. Mike Coolahan making sure that everybody in the back line has picked up a man and that the goal is well marshalled. And it's going to be Johnny Dooley who will take it. Would he go for a point? I think he's been instructed to do so. He's going for a goal, and he's got it! 
a goal at three points. That's exactly what Offaly require and what the game has needed. It puts a completely different complexion on this game. Look as he composed himself, drilled it in mercilessly beyond the wall of defenders and away to the far corner. So just two points between the teams. Look at the number of players they had back on the line defending and straight between Kieran Carey and Dave Clark. Awfully now feeling that they can turn the tide. But O'Connor's in! It's another one! It's another goal! Pat O'Connor has got it! Awfully are in front by a point! Two goals in the space of a minute and only four minutes left. This is where O'Connor from Kulderi got loose. Well, Limerick, I think, were dreaming of the Liam McCarthy Cup going home to Shannon side. But Offaly have taken two chances in the space of a minute. And this is the beauty of the game of hurling. Now who's going to win it? Limerick appear to be lording it at times. But you never have an Offaly team beaten. They come from a very small area in County Offaly, the hurling districts. From an eight-mile radius around Burr. They have a great club atmosphere. So too Limerick. Joe O'Connor taking it away. As far as Dave Clark. Dispossessed by Billy Dooley. Taken here by Brendan Kelly. Kelly playing it out to a loose man. Who's Johnny Dooley? Is that a point? It certainly is. A goal and four points now all of a sudden for Johnny Dooley. Come on, we can do it, he's saying to his colleagues. Eamon Cregan across on the far side, calling out the instructions as he masterminds what he hopes will be a third All-Ireland win for the faithful county. Ger Hagerty has it. What a transformation. What a last few minutes in this game. It's anybody's match. But the initiative firmly now with Offaly. Time running away. What will be the Limerick response? McDonough. Towards Frankie Carroll, beaten for it by Hubert Rigney. Comes back to Johnny Pockington, striving to take it up. Good vision, seeing that John Troy was free. Troy trying to tag on another point. But that's... That's over! Yes! Just seemed to have gone wide, but he had it perfectly. And there's a goal between them. John Troy's first point of the day. Triumphant fans up there on Hill 16. Ger Hagerty. Now suddenly it's Limerick who need a goal just to stay in it. Well, whoever said the match is never over until the final whistle. It was never truer than in this case here, as Billy Dooley fires in another beauty. A stage of the match when they can do absolutely nothing wrong. That's three points for Billy Dooley. Well, they've answered the critics. They've come back. Once again, it's Johnny Pilkington. Ooh, Billy just unable to keep that ball in play. I make it just about a little over a minute left, plus some injury time. An amazing transformation. John Troy picking it up again. Fired outside towards Billy Dooley on his left-hand side. It's just like routine practice now. A fourth point for Billy Dooley. With five minutes left, it had looked good for Limerick. And now all of a sudden, it's Offaly's match. Brendan Kelly has come out the field. Back again to Billy Dooley. Nobody marking him. And that's three in a row. A superb performance by the young man from Clarine in County Offaly, from the Sir Kieran's Club. Well, they're dancing for joy up on Hill 16. Jubilant fans, a breathless Billy Dooley. And now they lead by six. And it's Brian Wheelahan, the fans ready to invade Croke Park on the far side. Time almost up, still some time remaining. Almost as good as a point, that one, for Brian Wheelahan. Well, the youngsters are ready. Ready to come in and cheer their heroes. In front of that new stand, Johnny Dooley, slightly off balance. Down there it goes towards Pat O'Connor, the race won by Mike Nash of Limerick. Limerick 
in arrears by six points. We're not too long ago they were ahead by that same tally. Leo O'Connor on to Michael and he has to go for a goal. Inside, Pat Heffernan denied, stopped, and it's Martin Hanami who whips it away. The Offaly captain back to TJ Ryan. Inside to Brian Wheelahan. Superb performance by Wheelahan as always to Johnny Dooley. Took a while to really get into it, but what a finish. Dropping down there, Steve McDonough has it, booting it clear. Billy Dooley once more, and again they cheer just there at the end line. The couple of wides now don't really matter. When it mattered, they did the business, they came back strongly, and Offaly has won, and it's all over. Offaly the champions in 1994, just like 1981 and 1985. They were looking down and out, but they've come back to win by six points. Offaly 316, Limerick two goals and 13 points. What a comeback. And Eamon Cregan has masterminded a famous victory. JP Ryan there, having a word of congratulations with him. There will be instant interviews for the radio. My colleague Tony O'Donoghue down there getting the first of those. But what a day for the faithful county. And they always say you can never beat an awfully team in Croke Park. Even when they were a good distance behind, they had the self-belief and the conviction. And you think about that uh, free that Johnny Dooley took, that he might have put over the bar and put five between them or whatever, and he went for the goal all of a sudden. It was a completely changed picture. Johnny Pilkington, how he'll celebrate tonight and how he's entitled to. A wonderful occasion for young players who've come through having won minor All-Irelands. Remember, they won three minors. And this is the young lad we mentioned at the start of the senior broadcast. And tears in the eyes, I think, now. Lovely occasion. Proud youngster. Michael Kidney, I believe, is his name. And there he is, a proud, awfully supporter. His team did it. It's the stuff dreams are made of. At times like this, you have to feel what a wonderful county Offaly is from simple resources, small resources, but great talent, immense talent. And the great clubs represented the Burrs and the St. Rhinas and the Sir Kieran's and the Lossmas as well. No Kennedy or Shinron this time around, but in the past, how they played their parts. Sympathy as well for Limerick. They looked like they were on their way to a first win for 21 years, but at a critical stage in the match, Offaly got going. And when they got going, they were simply unstoppable. And a breathtaking finish. Martin Hanemi's troops came through to win in convincing fashion. Offaly, the All-Ireland hurling champions. In a historic week for Ireland, it has culminated in two great games today. Games befitting our great association and the great game of hurling. Cogardicus Forna Ophalia, Cobrona Limley of Aaron Law, the Ophalia Roby Lauder with you. Agus Leshin, Taz or Uncurtisha. Of Rona, the captain of Ayla, Martin Hanami. Jack Boothman, first time as GA president to present the Liam McCarthy Cup to Martin Hanami of St. Rhinas in Offaly. Offaly are the All Ireland hurling champions for the third time ever. What a day! Triumphant scenes here. I'm thinking of one man who's missing it today. Mick Frawley of Tipperary is in hospital. Oh, Wished well. Oh, go on, come on, Luke Laskell. Winter Uvalia. Connor has to and current shot locker. We're in Gunde Uvalia.
finally broke the hood of beating the Munster team in the final. Uh, at last, our great miners of the day has come through to be great seniors of the 90s. A lot of hard work went into this team for the last 10 months. A lot of men have to be thanked. So I'll start now. The team physio, Patsy Carroll. The team doctor, Brendan Lee. Our four wise selectors, Podge Mulher, Mick Spain, Andy Gallagher, and Pat Malachny. And these last two men, what can one say about them? They came from Limerick three times a week. One last name is Derry O'Donovan. We call him a lot worse than that some nights during the winter. The last man I have to thank is Eamon Cregan. <laughs> to Gary Kirby and his faithful men, I say hard luck. You had it for the taking, but we finished the stronger. But you're a young team. And you'll be back again. Three cheers for Limerick. Have hip! Have hip! Have hip! So Martin Hannity and his team rejoice on a famous day for awfully hurling. I think he's got in all the mentions, and in particular, Derry O'Donovan and Damon Cregan, the Limerick connection on a day awfully beat Limerick. Oh, what an extraordinary game of hurling that was. Five minutes from the end of the match, if you were to say that Offaly would be the All-Ireland champions, you'd find hardly anybody who would have believed you. But there they are, their third All-Ireland ever. There's still a lot more to talk about here from Croke Park, of course, about this amazing game. After the commercial break, do please stay with us. That's the scene at Croke Park in the aftermath of the All-Ireland Hurling Final in which Offaly have beaten Limerick on a scoreline of 3.16 to 2.13 and I suppose two sets of disbelieving supporters down there. The Offaly supporters find it hard to believe that they've actually won this game and certainly the Limerick supporters will find it difficult to believe that their side lost leading all the way through up to those last critical few minutes of the game. DJ Carey and Pete Finnerty have been here in the presentation box with me this afternoon enjoying that match and DJ, first of all, your reaction to it. I'm, I'm still a bit shocked actually, Michael. Uh, we were saying here with five or ten minutes to go, if Offaly could get a goal, uh, it might make a, a good last ten minutes. And we couldn't see it coming, to be mm -hmm. honest. But when it did come, it came in, in abundance. Let's have a look at it then, DJ. And uh, as you said, this was the, the beginning of the big revival. That's true. I said it to Pete beside me, what would you do? And he said, I'd have to blast it. And, and, and we agreed on it. And he blasted it, he did, and, and scored a great goal. And that was, that was the revival, because just a minute afterwards off they got a goal again you know which put him straight into the lead we're going to have a look at a couple of replays of this uh, an awful lot of pressure obviously on johnny dooley here now an awful lot he rose it very well and struck it well struck it low low and hard right into the corner of the net it goes without saying dj that had he not got that i mean there was no way back for offaly it was it was that or nothing because they were still two points down at this stage yeah well in fairness he had to have a goal for it because there were so there were five points down only five minutes left there's the other goal from Pat O'Connor. But there were only there were five points down with five minutes left. I, I felt I had to have a goal. He got it and uh, probably on hindsight will probably win the match, uh, has won the match for, for Offaly. Pete Finnerty, Johnny Dooley's goal from the free was the start of the revival, but this was the one that really won the All-Ireland for Offaly. Yeah, that, that, that really was the one. O'Connor watched the ball coming in. There was two places that could have, he could have gone. Uh, you see it here, Ethan. Then came this series of points, of course, and what Offaly couldn't do for 65 minutes, suddenly they couldn't stop doing. No, they couldn't, and we just said here in the last six minutes to go, it looked as if Offaly were dead and buried. Uh, but this is the advantage they have of playing here in Crow Park. They scored points from, at will from all over the place, some magnificent scores, and Limerick couldn't break their momentum. They hooked them, they harry them, they blocked them. Look at this for fighting spirit. Like, Ger Hegarty another time would force those lads out of the way, but this is the spirit that Offaly possess. And, Look at this, just have a look and tap it over. 
but Johnny Dooley certainly uh, over that closing period his goal and then the points he contributed uh, he suddenly blossomed in this game out of nowhere he did he he was very quiet for, for a man of his caliber all day um, but then that's the caliber player he is he just sprung to life when, when he was needed he was well marshaled all day but suddenly a goal two or three points on, on the trot when often he really needed it there's John Troy's point, of course, which then started uh, DJ to stretch the lead for Offaly. And at this stage, Limerick were, were gone. I mean, there was, there was no way back. They were just being overwhelmed at this point. Well, Limerick were after hurling so well all day. Uh, should have been a lot more ahead at half time. Uh, and weren't. I left Offaly slightly in the match. But we thought Limerick were hurling very well in the second half as well, that they weren't going to let Offaly back. But here's another man, Billy Dooley. He must have scored four points on the trot. Yes. You know, when off they went in the lead, they could do no wrong at all. And no team can bounce back from that. When, when you have that little bit of momentum going, things are going to go very well for you. There's no way back from that, especially with only five minutes left. After scoring one of the uh, the points at the close there, I saw Billy Dooley actually scratch his head sort of in disbelief. I don't think he could believe what was happening for himself. Well, I, I don't know. I could awfully even believe it. But here's Brian Wheelahan steps up again. <coughs> this, this, one, this one goes wide. But... Uh, I think uh, we were just commenting on that. Brian was probably the, the best Offaly player today over the hour. But um, I don't know, how would you go about picking a man of, a man of the match from Offaly if you had to pick one from Offaly? Because how, how little were they in the game through, you know, up to the last five minutes? That's an interesting point, point Keith Finerty. If you were to actually stop the play five minutes from the end of the match and, and not knowing what was then going to happen and say, now assess the Offaly team for me, it would, it would have to be a very critical assessment. Oh, it would have to be, because at that stage there were at sixes and sevens and, and very few of them, as DJ said, had played anywhere near the potential. Um, Limerick were dominant in the half-back line, their own half-back line. They were dominant at midfield. They dominated the Offaly half-back line for a long period of the, of the game. The switch at half-time to put um, Brian Whelan in centre-back and Rigney out in the wing worked uh, fairly well. But the next thing, uh, Limerick came dominant in their half-back line, uh, which was counteracting the ball was going over their heads. Um, Offaly looked very poor up to the last five minutes. But then the goal came, they got a roll, they got a momentum going, and Limerick couldn't be beat them, couldn't get back at them because they hadn't enough time. Their confidence was gone and time was running out. I'd say at one stage, and you couldn't blame him, Gary Kirby must have been thinking about, about his speech because I watched him as he took the last three and I said, if this goes over, Gary, I said, that, that's it. I said, um, you, can, you can concentrate on your speech from there on in. And suddenly it, it went all wrong. Do you think a little bit of complacency then to follow on at that point may have crept into Limerick because they surely must have said to themselves, well, we've won this one. It had to because they haven't been here before and they were so far ahead and things were going so well for them. They were even getting the breaks of the ball and the bounce and things like that, that they had to say, Look, it won't be grand to be up there and, and you just take your eye off what you're doing for, for a minute and awfully got back in, seized the opportunity and I feel awful sorry for, for Limerick because they did everything except for uh, receive the cup. Like, they had it wrapped up. If you were a supporter, you'd be nearly going around the back of the stand to meet them afterwards. It, it's, it's, it's tough because to come out of Munster, you have to do so much. And next year, they have to look at Cork and Tipperary and Clare and Waterford again. And the one break they get, and they win the semi-final, and to go so far and to leave it behind them. Not taken from Offaly. Well, of course, and I suppose, uh, Peter, it should be said that uh, the Offaly team of the last five minutes or so, DJ, was, that was more like the Offaly team we know. I mean, it wasn't just suddenly that they kind of stole a match they didn't deserve. They never played up to their potential for most of the game. That was more like Offaly in the end. Yeah, that's true with the last five minutes, but if, if I was to be asked during the week, uh, if it was if Offaly, if it was close with five or ten minutes to go, uh, who would you go? I'd say I'd have to go for Limerick. Mm. Looking at Offaly in the last five, ten minutes of every game, uh, that's where they slipped up. Although they, they, they didn't lose, but teams came back in the last five or ten minutes. And uh, the really, the last five minutes that they put in was, was, was something else. All right, DJ, uh, well, let's go down to the dressing room right now. And Marty Morrissey hopefully is down there. I hope he's been able to beat his way in because I'm sure there's tremendous celebration and jubilation.